And so I they thought that was so fun. They were also excited to tell me how many points they had. This was a fourth and fifth grade class. Um, so, uh, and then for making it relatable, if I'm asking them, for example, a question about what's your favorite food or what's your favorite cat, instead of asking them about, I don't know, like fries, I'll ask them about a specific fruit that's very popular in Thailand that either everyone needs or everyone loves. So it's like more relatable to them because that's something that they encounter in their daily lives instead of something that's more American if they're not as familiar with. Yeah, and actually going off that, um, I find it like very um, good in a lesson when you have students share about um, their themselves and their uh, cultures so ask like personal questions about like say, what's your favorite food in Thailand or what is the most popular food? Like I did a lesson on food and that and that lesson has got like by far the most participation and enthusiasm than I've ever gotten in any other lesson. Because I think going off of your point too, because it's relatable to them. And not only did I just ask them about their culture, I also shared a little bit about our, my culture too, um, Korean, Chinese, and American. And even like presenting about like American food, um, they were also very enthusiastic to participate um, the, um, and answer like questions themselves. And so I think it's great to have the cultural exchange, and that's what really um, has the students like engaged and also like really enthusiastic about the lesson. Um, and I guess one other thing that I found in very interesting is that I teach um, math as well as the main subject. So I teach math in English, and I found it very interesting to connect um, your main subject with English, um, and that way teach both subjects at the same time. And the way I've done that is like, I've taught um, like certain math symbols in English, for example, like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, I said times divided by plus and minus, and I've had the students read those symbols and numbers in a sentence, and I would point to there would be an equation on the board that I would make, and they would read that equation in English. And I remember, um, and actually the inspiration for that lesson was my dad told me, um, he was raised in Thailand and Singapore, and he told me, like, um, in Thailand they don't teach you those, um, like those, like how, how to, for example, necessarily to read like math, certain math symbols in English. And so when he got to Singapore International School, and there everyone was reading the equations in English, he did not understand a word what they're saying because he doesn't understand what times divided by plus and minus meant. So he was completely lost. And so I just also find it, um, and I think it's a, it's um. It's, it's interesting to include in your lesson, and I think it's also very helpful for the students. Like, for example, if you're teaching science, find that intersection between science and also English, and that would really be like helpful for the students. Uh, Anna, do you think this is a good time to show the video? After school, I like to read books. What do you like to do after school? I read in books. Very good. Next one is me and okay.
the uh, the pandemic the time that got a lot worse, so their school became on Zoom. And so my teaching strategies changed a little bit, and it was definitely a learning, uh, it was definitely a learning curve. But um, <laughs> one, of things, one of the things I did um, to try to include some writing practice in the lessons, because the only time I could really do writing practice was for homework. So I wanted to incorporate that into the class time. So I tried to, I started using the chat in um, line, which is what we were using, it was um, And so I would ask a question, um, and then I would say, like, answer it in the chat. And I'd give an example of, of an answer that they can write. And a lot of times they would just copy and paste what I wrote, uh, and send it back to me. <laughs> and so that was when I think it worked. <laughs> So, um, so one solution I found was either to, um, like we just write a blank instead of giving an actual answer so they can't copy and paste it, um, or to just not use the chat at all. Um, I guess um, adding on to large group, I think um, one lesson that didn't go well was a lesson that I didn't really understand their culture. So when I was teaching, um, like again the same, I think the same exact class. Um, I didn't know that in Thailand um, they don't have the kids raise their hand to give answers. It's more like the teacher would just sit and on the chalkboard write down stuff and the kids would do it in their notebook. The kids would not actually be actively participating. I didn't know that on my first few times. Um, so I I was like had an equation on the board and then I asked uh, I asked a student uh, to volunteer and come up and do it. Like I just asked, who wants to come do it? And of course, there's I I got, I got like 30 confused eyes. Like <laughs> what? Um, like they didn't know exactly what I was asking. They they and they asked me to clarify. Like, are you sure? Like one of us come up there? Like I I and of course I didn't know. I was like yes yes. And then it it took at least like a good five minutes. Like for me trying to understand like. I was trying to come up with other ways to try to get someone to the board. And then it turned out we, um, the kids just pushed um, one, started pushing one girl to the board. And then they, they said, their justification was, oh, she's the smartest kid in the class. She is going to do the equation on the board. And then she ended up doing it. Of course, it was correct. Um, and after that, I, I reflecting on that lesson, I was like, oh, I think I need to go inside their class and see how they actually learn. Um, so I did, I, I sat through one of their other math classes and then that's when I realized, oh no, the, the teacher doesn't have them go up to the board to do stuff. And I didn't, and that, yeah, I didn't realize that because that's how I was raised in my class at Barnes. Um, so that's definitely something that I need to learn. And I think when you guys have so much different uh, students from different cultures, um, I'm not sure exactly if, uh, how you'd be able to learn what their culture, is, their school culture is like in school, um, but definitely be aware that there there might be some kids from the same culture, like for example, ones like Thai, from Thailand here, who don't normally go up and participate, and you have to be aware of that and try not to push them out of their comfort zone. And of course, like you should slowly introduce like our school mannerism here, but definitely not like all of a sudden like um, like so fast so that. They just get um, the like, wait, what happened? Yeah, so that's definitely something that I'm trying to improve on.
we had windows, we had a phone, we had a notebook, no time to pay attention. But when you have a teacher that come in, look you in the eye, ask you questions, encourage you to do problems on the board, encourage you to actually understand the uh, subject yourself, encourage you yourself to study. That's when the class performance just go up. I don't want to look like class. I don't pay actual attention to the class. So that something that's very important is to have students actually engage in the learning process. Another thing I want to add is going straight into the lesson doesn't always work. So what I do usually is I start a lesson. I don't go straight into the lesson. I warm up, ask them what they're doing, like ask them what they know about the subject, uh, get them excited about the lesson, talk to them about the, maybe the real world views of the subject that we can talk about, like show them how cool the normal subject is, and then get them ready, relaxed, decided to learn, willing to learn, and then start the lesson. I mean, just jumping straight into class is like sort of like dropping a nice very slowly into a classroom and just, they're confused, you don't know what to do, and it's really a mess. And another thing I want to add is, one side less than the work. So this kind of go back to like my first suggestion is that when a teacher is completely um, like found the lesson, uh, even no opportunity for student to think or uh, answer questions, the lesson will not be as successful. The thing is the student need to think uh, themselves. Like one thing you can do is to help them think by asking simple questions. So some teachers do is that they ask straight the challenging questions. They think that it will encourage students to think deeper. But the reality is when you ask a student a challenging question, some students that you ask are not going to know how to do it. And what they will feel is that they feel nervous, disencouraged, and afraid of the lesson. And it's not really an emotion like feeling that you really want your class. So you go ask questions, hard questions, ask simple questions, maybe about the thing that you covered in last class, or like something that's sort of common knowledge around the topic, to encourage themselves to stay, encourage themselves to ask themselves questions while they're teaching. So that's uh, a good way to actually encourage, engage, and think about what's the subject. Um, and for me, so I started to study um, when I was in seventh grade, and it's kind of opposite for most of y'all students. I am really confident with my speaking, but my writing and reading is just a disaster. Um, so when the first few lessons with my students, I was like, just, I had enough how to speak. When I was a young student, I was just thinking that he also knew how to speak. So I tried um, and. Uh, communication-based lesson, which um, is kind of like we talk about a topic and I ask him questions and he asks me questions and this whole lesson is kind of just like chatting and stuff like that. But then it ended up not going really well because um, when he had started, um, I didn't know that he um, is more confident with writing and reading compared to only um, um, so then I found relying on visual image are more effective way to teach. So now on my slides, I will have uh, many different pictures. And since also uh, he is Japanese and I don't speak Japanese, um, so we also don't have a common language. So I always use, instead of, instead of just using Google Translate, I um, always uh, Pictures on Google. I, I would just search on if I would have something that I couldn't explain to them. I would just straight uh, go to Google Image and be like, this is what I was talking about. Instead of typing it into Google Translate and be like, this is what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, that is um, what I have learned from that.